Okay, so welcome back. This is part five in our series where we're going to show you how to use a very inexpensive Arduino Uno that surprisingly has built-in Wi-Fi. It's very inexpensive. It's only like five or eight US dollars at this point. And we're going to show you how to put it into a project where we are going to measure the frequency of the wall outlet voltage supplied by your power company. And I've done videos on this before uh, explaining why it's such a fascinating thing to monitor. You can monitor the health of the grid, of the electric power grid, feeding your neighborhood, your house, your town, your city, your state, or even your country. And you can monitor that in real time using, using this application with your Arduino Uno. And you can see here we've got an Arduino Uno on the bench, totally disconnected from our computer. Uh, we've only got a small uh, smartphone USB battery that's powering it and it is measuring the frequency of a square wave coming out of our signal generator and it is calculating the frequency as a decimal number and sending that over Wi-Fi to this application and in this video we're going to show you how to build this application in the previous videos we showed you how all of this works and how you can program the Arduino to do this to send the to measure and send the data in this video we're going to show you how to do this where we are starting a client server connection to this Arduino on the bench and it is automatically reading the 60 Hertz that's being measured by the Arduino from the signal coming out of the signal generator and in real time it's being updated every half second and giving you this value and we showed you before we can change the value and it updates in real time so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to write this C-sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application to basically just sit there, set up a connection to the Arduino in a client server connection. We talked about that previously. And it's just going to wait and grab data from that Arduino as it sends it out every half second and display it in this application. So let's take a look at the C Sharp uh, code to see how we can get this done. So here is our C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. If you've never done software development before, I really encourage you to look at our three-part series on how to write your very first C-sharp application. It's really a wonderful opportunity because you can pretty much drag and drop stuff and create a UI, a user interface like you see here, and it's so much easier to develop applications with a development environment like this, so I encourage you to look at that. So here we've got our user interface design, we've got a text box, we've got a label over here that's going to print out the frequency that we get. We've got three buttons. So here is our application. Um, we've got the using statement system, system.net, system.net.sockets, system.text, system.threading.tasks, system.windows.forms. So I've got this set up as I do with most of my C-sharp applications. I'm using regions. I've got docs, pound region, pound end region. We've got a little documentation, a to-do list, and some parameters. We've only got a couple parameters we're using here. Um, our public form one initialized component. We've only got one method and it just listens and connects to any clients that want to connect to the server here. And it grabs data and does the calculations. And then we've got three event handlers, one for each of the buttons. So button start, button exit, and button pause. Uh, button exit does nothing except exits and button pause just sets the uh, sets a boolean to false and we'll look at that later so um, really the the big worker here is this method called uh, listener and we'll get into that so um, this is going to start off with these two parameters one is the TCP port now we talked in previous videos on Wi-Fi connections how those work and there's a TCP port we decided to use port 49002, we explain why. So that's a static integer, doesn't change on the port that's being connected to on this computer. And then com continue equals true, and we'll show you that it's basically a Boolean that's going to um, allow us to pause or run our communications. So that's about it, we've got the form one, and then what's gonna happen first is when the user clicks the start button, it will run this listener method and that's about it so we can go into the listener method where all of the work gets done you can see it's an asynchronous method and we talked about async and tasks and multi-threaded applications i encourage you to look at that video 
But here is our listener method. And it's one big try and catch statement. So it's going to basically try to connect. And while it's connected, it's going to grab the data. And again, this is very similar to what we've developed before in our discussion of Wi-Fi client server. There's really nothing new here, so I encourage you to look at that. But we'll go briefly through this. The only difference is that um, while we are connected, it's just going to automatically grab whatever string is coming from the Arduino and then display it. And that's about it. Before we were sending out a command asking for data, this is just going to grab whatever data is there and uh, display it. So it's an async method, async void listener. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, send to the text box starting TCP listener with a carriage return line feed. And then we're going to set the IP address as the server's address and set the port equals 49002. So we're going to set up a TCP listener. We're going to call it a server. And it's a new TCP listener. IP address any and the TCP port, which is 49002. And then we're going to start that server on this on this computer. So now it's just, we've started the server and it's going to listen for accepting clients on whatever port we've got, which is 49002. So text box one, append text, accepting clients on port 49002. If a connection exists, the server will accept it. If no client exists and the async version isn't used, this will cause the app to hang while it waits. That's why we use an asynchronous method here because it's just going to hang while it's waiting. So we're doing it asynchronously so we can get back and do other stuff. So TCP client client is await server accept TCP client async. So we're just awaiting while this met this thread goes out and tries to look for clients and we're awaiting that and when we get it we will have a new TCP client we're going to call it client. So at this point, um, when this has been completed, a remote client has been accepted and we're going to ask it for its address. So the client IP address is client.client.remoteEndpoint2String. And that's just allowing us to, to print out for user feedback what the address is of the client. So text box one, append text, client connected from IP address, whatever that client IP is. And then we're going to instantiate a network stream. We're connected, so now we're going to instantiate a network stream to start communication with that client. And we're going to say network stream, we're going to call it ns, is client.getStream. So now we're setting up the protocol with the client and we're ready to talk. So while the client is connected, we're using the connected property, the Boolean, while the client is connected and com continue equals true, this is where we can pause it if we want and make this false. But assuming it's um, true and we want to keep can, we want to keep communicating with the client while it's connected and we want to communicate, what we're going to do is we're going to prepare for receiving the messages. And the messages are just basically going to be a string that looks like this. 60.04 or whatever the measured frequency is and it's a string. So it's going to arrive as a byte array. When we read from the network stream, it's going to read the data into a byte array. So since they look like this, that's going to be a string of six characters. One, two, three, four, five. And then the carriage return line feed is going to be the sixth character. So it's going to be six characters. So we're going to have a new byte array of six characters and we're going to call that message. So we're going to read the message sent by the client using that network stream object and put it into that byte array. So we're going to do a network stream dot read, put it into message, and we're going to have an offset of zero. We want to start from the first character. And then the message length is going to be that six characters. So we're basically going to read six characters, including the carriage return live feed. And that's going to be our message. And then we have to convert that to a string. Again, it's a byte array. So we're going to do encoding default get string from that byte array. And we're going to call it val string. So now we've got the 60.04 string. And all we have to do is 
put that value into our label. So label one dot text equals val string. And that's going to print out in our label the frequency. And then we can do a delay of a tenth of a second and wait for the next value. So it's really very simple. You're just grabbing a byte array, converting that to a string, and displaying it. If we don't, if we if that doesn't work, then we're just going to say client disconnected and return. So really, that's all there is to this. It's very simple, and um, it's just going to grab a value asynchronously and display it. So that's about it for this one. Um, in the next video, we're going to take all of this code, the C-sharp code and the sketch on the Arduino, and we are now going to put together the hardware into that box with the external Wi-Fi antenna. We're going to put all the hardware together, and we're going to build the box and show how we can use it remotely, plug it into a remote wall outlet, and actually measure the frequency of the um, utility voltage and send that value over Wi-Fi to this application. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.